guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danielle with Damn Fancy Creations and today we are going to be making a fun summer tumbler. Today's tutorial is going to have a bright neon tie-dye base with my favorite, a leopard swirl because who doesn't love leopard? Um, my tie-dye is created with different shades of bright neon acrylic paint and then my typical leopard swirl that I do on several other tumblers. Um, I did go back and add some gold leaf to the tie-dye and to some leopard spots just to kind of change it up a bit and I really really like how this turned out. I am probably going to strip one of my personal tumblers and make me one like this because I think it just screams summer and I could see myself taking this out on our boat this summer with my favorite drink in it. Um, so I hope you guys really enjoy this tutorial and I cannot wait to see what you guys create and put your own little twist on it. So if you guys are ready to see how I make my tie-dye leopard swirl, let's get started. So first things first, as always with my cups, I start with a white painted base and then I have a few different sizes of skinny paint brushes on hand a cup of water, and some bright neon paints. I use about five different colors. They do sell them in larger containers, but they do not sell every color in the large container. So I do have the smaller ones on hand. And I'm basically just going to squirt a few out onto a piece of paper. So we are going to be using hot pink, yellow, blue, bright green, and purple. And if you don't want a neon base, you can definitely use pastels or you can use a different color combination. I just like the neon because it was spring and summer is coming up and I figured that this would be a good tutorial for you guys in case you wanted a bright summery tumbler. So I'm going to start with my pink and I'm basically just going to make an X and then pull the paint out from the center to the edges. This will make our center. And then I go back with a longer brush and just kind of make wispy lines from the tumbler. And you want to make them not even, if that makes sense. You want them to be a little bit uneven because when you see tie-dye or when you actually do a tie-dye, they're not going to be perfectly even all the way around. So I am just pulling the pink paint from the center to the edges until I get the center about the size that I want it. Then we're going to go in with our yellow and overlap our pink just a little bit. And basically do the same thing. We're going to pull the yellow from the center, but it's not really the center of the tumbler, just where, where it meets the pink. And we're going to pull it outward. And if you guys have seen my brush stroke tumbler, this, these colors are very similar because I use the same colors and the technique is kind of similar as well because we're using our knowledge of color mixing, basically taking it back to elementary art class. <laughs> so if you lay the yellow next to the pink, then that is going to create orange. If you laid blue on top of the pink, then that would have created purple. So you, you know, want to make sure that the colors that you are laying next to each other are going to create colors that you want and not get a muddy color that you do not want. They don't have to be the exact same as these, but you just want to make sure that the color combinations you're creating are going to be pretty and what you're looking for. So again, I am just lightly wisping my longer paintbrush from the inside out. 
and you don't want to make them all totally even, the brush strokes. So after the yellow, we're going to go in with the blue. We're going to do the same thing that we did with the yellow. We are going to overlap the yellow just slightly and pull the color from the inside out. And where the blue overlaps the yellow, it, we are going to get a pretty green shade. And I will go ahead and point out too that these neon colors are a little bit more translucent than some of my other paint colors. That is why this technique works well with these colors. If you had more opaque colors, then the blending may not happen as much as it happens with the translucent colors. So that is something that you may want to test out before you start it on a tumbler, just to make sure that you like how the colors looked when they are overlapping each other. And I do try to work quick. Obviously this video is sped up a little bit, but if the paint colors are still a little bit wet, when you are overlapping them. It does help with the blending aspect. So y'all can see that I really just kind of get that overlapping base color kind of started first, and then I will go back and extend the brush strokes of the color that I have applied. So right now I am just going back and extending the blue a little bit. And you can use a thicker brush if you want to. I just prefer the thinner brushes because you can control the paint strokes a little bit more. If the brush is thicker, then you can't really get those thin wispy lines that I like. And after we're done with this blue, we are going to go back in with our pink, just like we did on my brush stroke tumbler. And we're going to overlap the blue. And you guys can see that it is starting to turn purple a little bit where it overlaps the blue. This is why the translucent paint is really good because it does not take much to get that color blending. And I mentioned in my brush stroke tumbler, but if you guys have seen Stepmom and when Julia Roberts is teaching her stepdaughter how to paint the trees and she has that whoosh, 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 whoosh sound that helps her make the leaves of the trees, that is exactly what is going through my head when I am making this tumbler or even watching it on the video. <laughs> but we are basically just going to do this all the way around our tumbler. We are just pulling from the inside out. And that way you get those wispy little ends. And 
And after we are done with our three colors, I do go back in and touch up some of the blending areas, I guess, and help pull out those other colors that we haven't actually applied to our tumbler yet, the orange, green, and purple. And right now I am just kind of pulling the paint from the outside in just to kind of clean up those little lines a little bit just to help our blue circle look a little bit more even all the way around. There were some spots that were a little too funky for me. <laughs> And then we're doing the same thing we did for the other circles, which is basically just extending that color. We already blended the pink and the blue to make a little bit of purple. And now we're just extending that color so we have enough pink to mix with the yellow and make orange. And even though this video is sped up, I do apply these brush strokes pretty quickly. I just kind of move my brush back and forth, <laughs> which helps create kind of those wispy, uneven lines. If you do go slower, then your lines would probably be a little bit more even and not as wispy as I like to call them. So now we're going back in with our yellow, which I believe is the final color I used for this particular step. And after this yellow is applied, that is when we go in with our other three colors and kind of touch up the blended parts of the tie-dye. So from start to finish, this tie-dye probably took me about an hour to do, so it does take a little bit of time, but I actually really enjoy doing tie-dyes. Um, I actually started off with painting and doing little paintings, <laughs> so getting back to painting a tumbler is actually something that I really enjoy. It's kind of a break from the regular water slide or glitter that I'm used to, so I have really fun doing tie-dyes or my brush stroke tumbler or other painted tumblers that I do. So I'm just going back and kind of pulling the colors in that I may not have overlapped super well the first time. And then we're going to close up this gap right here. Which looks like a highlighter on this video. <laughs> and 
And then before I do the other three colors, I just kind of went back with the pink just to brighten it up a little bit. You can really see on the video, but it they are translucent colors, so a little bit of white was showing through. So now basically what we're going to do is take a little bit of the orange and go around just right where our colors met originally and just touch up any little spots that may need it or add a few more little wispy lines. And I also get my yellow and touch up any yellow that may be missing. I did have a few white streaks kind of throughout the tumbler and I wanted to kind of, you know, not have any white showing if I could help it. So I'm just dragging the yellow back through and then taking some more orange and dragging that through the yellow. And then we are going to take our green and just do the same exact thing. Just kind of touch up where the yellow and blue meet. Basically just overlapping the green that was already formed when we covered the yellow with the blue. You don't want to add so much green that you get rid of the yellow and the blue. You just are using this basically as an accent color. And it's just thin, wispy little motions. And if you think that you need to pull it back through the center, you can also do that as well just to help blend the colors a little bit better. And you guys can see that I also took some of my yellow and pulled that back through. So the whole tumbler is basically a blending. If you need more blue, you can add more blue. If you need more pink, you can add more pink. And they're just going to continue to blend together because of how we laid them. So my blue had a lot of white kind of showing in the little stripes or the brush strokes. So I went back and basically added a whole nother layer of blue. just to help make it a little bit more opaque. And I do continuously wipe my brush off. Because my brush is so skinny, the paint would build up on it a lot, and I didn't want clumps of paint on the tumbler, so I would just kind of wipe it on my paper just to clear off the clumps, and then dip it in paint again and get started. So now we are taking our purple, and we are coming back through where the pink and the blue met. And you guys can see that I am really just going over the purple that we already created when we blended the pink and the blue. And it really just helps bring that purple out. It's not like we're creating a whole nother ring of purple. We're just basically accenting what is already there.
and then once we are done with the purple we are going to go back in with our pink and pink and yellow and orange mixture and right now I am just kind of covering any white that may be showing pulling out some more pink if I feel like I need to do that And then we will go back in with our orange and just use that to accent the orange that is already there. And then you can go back in with yellow again, fill in any holes that you need to. And then you don't want to forget about your bottoms. I decided just to do tie-dye on the bottom, just simple like I did before. The bottom, I, I'm pretty sure I covered half of it with leopard print, so I wasn't too careful with how I did the tie-dye on this bottom. <laughs> Just enough to give it some color. And this is basically what it looks like. And now we are going to add our gold leaf. So with the gold leaf, I try to use sheets if I can, but I did not have any of them at the time. So I just use my flakes. And I basically just do the same thing with my glue stick that I did with the paintbrush, which is start from the center and just pull the glue stick outward. And then I just rubbed some gold leaf on there. I was really going for more of a distressed gold leaf look. So I am just kind of randomly putting little gold leaf specks on there. And kind of rubbing them around. And I will go back with my paintbrush, obviously, and clean this up a little later. Um, right now I'm just kind of dusting some of them off because I didn't want them in my way when I was trying to apply the new lines of glue. So I just go around the whole tumbler kind of making different strokes with the glue, some short, some long, just so they don't all look the exact same. And the gold leaf does stick really well to the glue stick. 
so you just need a little bit. You do have to work quickly though because the glue stick does dry fairly fast. So you want to make sure that you're able to get your gold leaf on there before it dries. So basically the same thing as before, just making random glue stick lines and dabbing on some gold leaf. And I really like the feel and the look that this gold leaf brought to the tumbler. It just gave it a, another aspect that I really liked. And once all that gold leaf was on and I made a mess at my table, I just took my stiff bristle brush and just kind of lightly brushed off all of the loose gold leaf that was on the tumbler. And I really kind of used my brush to distress a lot of this gold leaf because I didn't want just random solid spots of gold leaf. I really just kind of wanted a little bit of shimmer just to give the tie-dye a little something extra. So I did brush off most of it, which is fine because I just pour that back into my gold leaf bag. And once you brush everything off, if you feel like, you know, you need a little bit more in certain spaces, then you can always go back and add a little bit more, which is what I did. And this is basically what it looks like when you get done with this step. So after we apply our gold leaf, it is time to do our leopard swirl. Obviously, we are going to try to cover this ugly part of the tie-dye or just the back of it. So what I'm going to do is take my clear spray. I use Rust-Oleum two times. You can use gloss, semi-gloss, matte, whatever. And we're going to use some champagne glitter. And I spray it at an angle across the tumbler basically just like this. Obviously I'm not gonna do this inside, so I take it outside to spray it really quickly and then bring it back inside to sprinkle the glitter. So I really just let my glitter 
kind of waterfall down the tumbler as I turn it. And I really am not too focused on where this glitter is going to go. I know where I sprayed my spray. And as long as the glitter falls on that spot, it will kind of start to form the shape that I'm looking for for my swirl. And my husband just fired up the pressure washer, so I'm sorry if you guys can hear that. So basically what I'm going to do now is spray just on the edges of my swirl that is started, and we are going to sprinkle the glitter just on the edges. So you can see that the glitter is just waterfalling down the sides of the cup, which helps to create that gradient effect that I am going for. And then we will come back and touch that up with my tea strainer. So we're going to bang this off. And we are going to spray just the edges of the swirl one more time. And then we are going to use our tea strainer and just tap along the edges of the swirl just to give it that gradient look. And the same thing with the other side. And then we're going to bang that off really well. If there are any spots that you need to touch up with your glitter, now would be the time to do it. And if you want to put glitter on the bottom, you can do that. I did do half glitter and half tie-dye on the bottom of mine. And then I will take it outside and spray seal it really, really well. And I did sprinkle some more glitter on the bottom really quick <laughs> just to make sure it was evenly covered. And that is it for this step. When this dries, I will apply the leopard spots. So for this particular tumbler, I did epoxy it before I applied the leopard print because I knew I was going to be doing some in gold leaf and I did want them pretty flat. So I'm gonna use black and brown paint and black and brown glitter and a glue stick to apply the gold leaf. So I always use black and brown paint just so if there is any glitter that may be missing, you're not going to be seeing gold through, you will just be seeing black or brown paint. So I did my gold leaf spots first. I basically just picked some random spots and added some leaf. just kind of patted it on. I didn't want too many gold leaf spots. I just wanted a few in there just to um, help tie in the gold leaf that was in our tie dye. So 
So that is all the gold leaf that I'm going to do for now. And now we're going to start our regular leopard spots. So I'm just going to take my paintbrush and add some brown dollops of paint. And then we are going to sprinkle on our brown glitter. And then bang that off really good. And I just kind of go in with a paintbrush and get rid of any loose glitter that may be around the spots. I don't actually brush the spots themselves because obviously the paint is still wet and that would not be a good idea. So now we are going to go in with our brush and just brush off the gold leaf as best you can because we are going to add some black glitter around these gold spots. And you guys can see that I'm pretty rough when I'm brushing off this gold leaf and if it is stuck to that glue then it is not coming off. And I did decide to add one more gold leaf area. And then I just brushed it off a little bit just so I could add my black. So I go ahead and open my glitter. I like to have everything kind of ready and laid out. And we're going in with our black paint. And we're just going to dab around the gold leaf and the brown glitter. And I do like to dab my paint versus swiping because I feel like it gives it a little bit more of a natural look. And then we are going to sprinkle on our black glitter. And bang it off really well. And then I go in with my little paintbrush and add the random little black spots in between the larger spots. and then sprinkle glitter on those spots. And once this paint is dried, I will spray seal it really well after I have brushed it off and then put it back on the turner for another layer of epoxy. Once the sealer is good and dry, I will apply my layer of epoxy. I typically apply my epoxy from top to bottom Make sure that you get the bottoms of your cups really well, but don't do it too thick because you don't want your bottoms to be uneven or wobbly. And then I wipe from bottom to top just to get rid of any excess epoxy that may be on there. That way you can avoid pools or unevenness. 
And once that epoxy is cured, we're going to sand the rims and the bottom. I take my sander and angle it at the rim and basically just scrub around the entire tumbler. Doing this will take off about one or two millimeters of paint and glitter and epoxy so that when you add your final layers of epoxy, everything is really smooth and sealed in very well. Also sand your bottoms really well just to make sure that they are good and smooth and then give the entire tumbler a good sanding so that your final few layers of epoxy have a good surface to adhere to. So after we have our tumbler good and smooth, I will wash it really well and then put it back on the turner for the final layers of epoxy. And that is pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really love how this cup turned out and I can't wait to see what you guys make from watching this. If y'all enjoyed this video or learned something new, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Also, don't forget the next video coming up. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, don't forget to check out my tutorial group on Facebook that is linked in the description. Thanks for watching.